In this episode, you will learn how to test asynchronous closures in Swift testing. Here we are in the demo that we saw last time when we talk about migrating XCT fail into issue.record. I will leave that video in the description if you want to take a look. But today, um, I want to test the equivalent version of this fetch paradox, but running with closures. As you may see right now, product store.fetch products is using uh, the new Swift concurrency framework. That's why we are using a wait here. And if you look close to this, we are using async. Now, um, I'm bringing just for demonstration what would happen if we used to have uh, a closure running asynchronous code and how can we test that in Swift testing? In exit test, this is more or less the way you should use, you should do for testing asynchronous code. Uh, just recapping, here we have uh, the product store configuration. And in order to run this in an asynchronous context, we have to use this expectation. Expectation is an object that will wait for you to tell when this test is done, okay? Because this test will run just, you know, as a normal code. But the problem is that whatever is inside here will run at some point in the time, but will run later once the test is done. So if we don't have this expectation and we just run this code without that, we basically uh, won't get what we want. Okay, so this expectation will, you know, put this code at some suspension to see, okay, and we'll wait for your expectation until something happens. And the thing is that uh, additionally to the expectation, uh, you will see that here we are executing the fetch for closure version. We are getting the result. If everything is fine, if we got the products we want, we just make an assert testing uh, that our product count is equal to three. If not, we are getting this exit fail, saying, okay, we're reporting that something is wrong. But whatever is the issue, or sorry, whatever is the result, we are telling expectation that this is done, with this fulfilled. But in order to do this, we need to wait. And that's why we are using this exit waiter that wait, and we are telling that we are expecting this expectation, and we have this timeout which is a uh, one second timeout. This is because we want to, we don't want to wait forever, okay? If, or if we are expecting that this should work in less than a second, okay, we are telling here that if it's taking longer, maybe something is wrong, I should check it out, okay? That's the way how you should test a synchronous code in exit test. Now the question is, what should do, what you should do for Swift testing? And let me show you how to do it. Let's jump here. Let me hide this for now because we don't need it. And again, um, we have the uh, previous te uh, uh, test that we migrate to Swift testing. Now we want to do the same with the previous uh, test that we just saw. So here we have this uh, deprecated test that we are trying to uh, show you to you right now with this test macro that enables the test in this suite, Swift testing. So the first thing is uh, setting up the product store that we are using, which is straightforward. I just have it here. Now we need then to bring back the product fetch. We are going to bring it here, result in, and we will do something here with the result. We'll just, yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, thanks to the autocomplete is, you know, <laughs> uh, completing this for me. But this is, uh, this won't be the final result. Well, um, again, here uh, we cannot use this spec directly because this test will happen or this expectation will happen after this test is finishing the execution. So we need uh some sort of uh, action to wait for this expectation, okay? 
The way to test this closure, asynchronous closure, is using part of the API from Swift Concurrency uh, that will allow us to transform this closure into an async away format. And that API is called continuation. I don't want to be too technical in continuation or Swift Concurrency because that's a different series of videos. By the way, I have a, video, a series of videos introducing you to uh, a couple of things like actors or async await or main actor that you can see, you can watch, sorry, in the description below. But right now I will just show you what you should do if you need to right now uh, translate this into Swift testing, okay? So for that, uh, there are a couple of APIs that you can use. One is something called with checked continuation. There are two versions actually. One is with check continuation, and, uh, and the other is with checked continuation. Sorry, with checked drawing continuation. And since that we will throw an error in case of something is wrong, I decided to use this one. Okay, let's use this one. And whoa, it's auto complete and everything. Nice. Okay, well, kind of. But yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what we have to do is put the closure that we want to test inside of this continuation uh, function, okay? Now, let me remove this. We don't need it, okay? Okay, now, uh, this continuation, it's equivalent to the expectation that we just saw in exit test. So you might expect that we should do something when we are fulfilling this code, okay? Um, actually, you can do something like this, but I would prefer instead to be specific about uh, the success and the failure case. So let's remove this for now, and we will use continuation, which again is part of uh, how we will tell this API to say, okay, we're done, okay? We will use continuation for, for this success case, we will use continuation dot resume returning products. Okay. This will tell the continuation framework to see this is the result, the happy path, and then return this object. That means here we will expect a product, well, a product's uh, object. Something like that. And Swift will infer everything for you, saying, okay, this is a product. Hope it's working. Yeah, there you go. There's a list of products expect because we are providing that. Okay. If you provide anything else, that this result will be different. Okay. Uh, and now, what will happen with this one? For this, continuation has a different one. We will use, in this case, resume throwing an error. Okay. And we will provide the error. Okay, and that's the configuration we have to use internally in this closure. Now, what is, why is this code still marking issues? Because it is a transforming this closure into a sync await. And since that this is the new Swift concurrency framework, we need to use await. And since this is throwing an error, we should also mark with try. And we do have to do the same here. A sync throws. The rest is straightforward. This ceremony could be a little bit verbose, but again, this is just in case you don't have enough time to test, or sorry, to migrate your closure into a sync await, which will be the best or the ideal thing that you should do. Uh, but in case you don't want to touch anything, because I mean, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well. This is a great way to do it. Now, the only thing here is just testing, okay? What is the expected result? And for that, there we go. For that, we just have to do this and we are good to go. Then let's run this and see what happened. Great. This is showing that product is equal to three. Awesome. 
However, what will happen if we got an issue? Let's see that. Let's use, as we saw in the previous episode, we have a test success. There is a mock uh, environment that I have. Let's use test error. And now see the result. It's showing, it's throwing an error. It's telling me that the that, uh, uh, test is failing, but it is just showing this a failure error that this failure error is something that I just provided for my API. If we go here, yeah, I'm throwing this failure. Okay. But if we want something more meaningful, I will recommend this. I will recommend that you put everything here inside a do catch. There you go. Okay. And now you can use a catch. Okay. And now use the issue that record that we saw in the previous episode right here, explain that we got something different to loaded state. Okay. Now let's see the result. This should be more meaningful for the test. Okay. We are getting an issue again, but this time we got something more meaningful. Issue recorded, expected loaded state, but got not started. Well, something I need to figure out what, what what's going on here, but you got the idea. Um, this is the way you should use, and I hope this could help you not only with Swift testing, but maybe with other uh, implementations that you could have transforming closures into Swift concurrency. Well, tell me, what do you think about this way to migrate closures into Swift concurrency and Swift testing? I would like to read your comments and really welcome to any feedback you have. That's it for me. So thank you so much and have a great day.